All right, so now I've actually cleaned the engine and I'm here with Ethan, the mechanic. Uh, actually learning a little bit about his background I think is quite interesting. I wanted to see if you could just tell us a brief background. I used to be, um, I grew up in a maritime boarding school and uh, supervised by the Navy and then immediately went into the Navy service. I was a chief engineer three years and um, then uh, finished that service and went into mega yachting. Uh, I used to be a chief engineer in mega yacht industry uh, various si uh, size boats, uh, all above 100 feet, and uh, just did that for about 15 years and uh, moved on uh, to assume the captain position. Um, did that for another five years and uh, basically uh, said that uh, enough travel. So uh, here I am. And we're getting ready to start on the first maintenance of the engine. But we're learning. I'm already learning a lot of interesting things. Like we're just talking about the uh, first oil change that I'm going to learn about. And I wanted to ask you. You know, you were kind of telling us the method we should start with, how we should uh, drain the oil. So there's two ways to drain the oil. Um, one way is to go through the dipstick, which is uh, in most engines. So sailboat engines will probably be the most common. Uh, the better way to drain the oil is actually from the bottom of the oil pan. The reason for it is uh, bottom of the oil pan is where we're going to get everything, every single drop of the oil, it should be every single drop, including the metal shavings and um, everything that may have uh, been retained by the uh, oil once it ran into the engine. Uh, once you do that, you do have a complete oil change and you can see that in the manual as well when sometimes they'll say um, if you change the oil. Uh, including the bottom of the oil pan or not including the oil pan, the quantity will change as well. Um, so we're going to approach this uh, engine today and we're going to see which way or what's the lowest point we can get the oil from. Now even though we want to get the oil from the oil pan, we're actually going to start off by going through the dipstick today to get the majority of the oil out. And in the past I have used this pump which works really well. It has a tube that goes down into the dipstick and then you pump it and it sucks the oil right out. Uh, Ethan, we're not going to use that today because Ethan has his own pump. It's an electric version. It has an electric motor with this bucket underneath that's the reservoir to catch the oil that we're going to be using today. Now do we have to like start the engine beforehand to kind of warm up the oil or is there any rule of thumb on that? Yeah, it's always better uh, to do that. Um, it will take, it will save some time on the oil, um, oil change because uh, hot oil will be more uh, thin and uh, it will flow a lot better through the pump. So, once you start an engine, there's two uh, things you should t test um, right off the bat. The first one is oil pressure. You want to make sure that the engine's building up oil pressure. If the oil pressure is low, you should shut the engine off. Uh, you definitely do want to run an engine with a low oil pressure because that's going to wear all the internal parts. The second one is make sure that there's a water discharge through the exhaust. Um, if that's the case and you don't have it, then the engine is just going to warm up and again you're going to wear out the internal parts. So those are the two tests as soon as you start an engine. Alright so we've let the engine run for about five minutes just to warm it up a little bit, get the oil a little warm. And now we're ready to attach Ethan's electric oil pump that I mentioned earlier. So you basically take um, take this part and uh, feed that inside to the dipstick area. Gotcha. So looks like it's just a matter of taking out the dipstick. Let me give you a little rag. So Want me to just go ahead and put it in there? Uh, uh, sure. Yeah, and then I'll come and check. Just uh, push it in as, as far as you can. So we've got the, the hole down there. Just stop once you're ready. Tell me when you're ready. Okay, go ahead. All right, now that we've pumped out all we can from the dipstick area, we're going to go ahead and take off the plug from the bottom, the bottom oil pan, and we're going to get the rest of the oil out from there. All right. So we're going to make a little makeshift oil pan for that bottom area, just taking this little tray from the dollar store and cutting it down. So hopefully we can fit it underneath that oil plug region.
I don't see any shavings, which is good. It's just solid black with no shavings. So one of the purposes of the oil other than lubrication is actually to collect and all that carbon buildup from inside the uh, cylinder. And uh, if you use the engine in a way that you could potentially put a lot of load on it, whether it's you know rev revving up the engine or high seas or you know um, you know you're just being hard on the throttle or bef between uh, forward and reverse then the, your diesel is going to get uh, darker sooner you know versus using it a little bit uh, uh, lightly or mildly um, so it's definitely due for an oil change Now time to take off the old oil filter, which is in this housing here. changing this gasket to ensure that there's no more leaks. This uh, gasket that comes with uh, this filter right here um, actually sits uh, between the, the filter housing um, to the uh, side it bolts on on the engine and uh, we have to extract the, uh, the old one and then put this one in place. Ethan removes the old gasket using this little pick tool. It's important to make sure this groove where it sits is clean when replacing the gasket to ensure a tight fit for the filter housing. Okay, so now that we've replaced that gasket, we're going to go ahead and replace the oil filter part. Now this uh, particular engine has this type of a cartridge oil filter. It comes in a box like this. Different than a lot of engines which have the all-in-one kind of spin-on style uh, filter. This is different, has the cartridge. Uh, you actually put this inside of that metal cover that we took off and then you will bolt that whole thing into the mounting area on the engine. All right, so now that we have that done, we want to go to the marine store because we have an idea. So you remember I showed you the oil pan plug at the bottom of the engine. We want to buy like a valve that we can actually thread into the same hole that the plug was in. Then we can attach a hose to that valve and then in the future, whenever I want to do an oil change, I can simply turn the valve, attach my pump to the hose, get all of the oil out from the lowest part of the engine, no mess whatsoever, very clean. So that's our objective. We're going to go to the marine store now and get the parts. Okay. And then this way we'll be able to stop the flow and we can connect uh, another adapter here. It's going to go from a quarter inch to say a three eighths if we need to. Um, something like this. Okay. And we can put a little hose over here that's going to go into our oil changer. Hmm. There we go. Right? Cool. What's that stuff? So it's a little uh, thread um, lubricant that you would use for the similar metals. Every time you're putting the similar metals together to prevent them from. Uh, 
sticking into one another. So I'll just put a nice dab on it. Put this hose on. Mm -hmm. I put this hose on. Hopefully, keep the entire area over here um, when we do an oil change clean. Um, we'll put some nice oil observers there just to kind of line it up or give us an indication if there's any other leaks. But this will, this setup is going to allow us to pump all the oil from the bottom of the uh, oil pan without going through the dipstick. put a gallon in and our dipstick is already showing that we're full and we know that it's not the case um, because we extracted more than one gallon um, but when we took out the oil filter uh, we saw that there is some in the oil filter itself so instead of filling up more now uh, we're probably gonna leave it with one gallon in we're gonna run the engine for a few minutes um, let it let the oil go through everything that it needs to go and then shut it off and uh, Check it again, and we're probably gonna find that we need to add a little bit more um, After that All right, so we got everything back together. We got the oil in we've got the oil filter tightened the new oil filter So now we're gonna start the engine So we ran it for a couple of minutes and then uh, we shut it off so we can check the uh, oil level. And it's like we suspected, the um, oil uh, really went into the uh, and filled up the new um, oil filter. And now we uh, have to top it up a little bit with a little bit more oil. Bullseye. Cool. All right, we successfully completed the oil change. And we also, while we were at it, we actually changed out the fuel filters as well as the water pump impeller. I have some additional footage of that that I'll probably show in a future episode. But for this episode, I really wanted to focus on the oil change and just show you that process. Uh, we also were able to install that cool new feature, so now in the future, I'm able to just use that valve and it goes into that hose. I'm able to put my pump into the hose and I'm able to pump out uh, the oil from that bottom oil pan, which will make it much easier than this time. So that's a cool little addition that you can probably put on your own boat, because I love a lot of these where they have the oil drain plugs in the same, in the same place. So thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and comment, and we'll see you next time. For this episode, I really wanted to focus on uh, how to do the oil change.